guys. Say hello. <laughs> hello. What's up? Really? We are on our way to Galveston, Texas. This is my booth. I told y'all was coming. Y'all saw her yesterday on the live stream. Maybe when she was just getting there. And they've been having fun. And so, what you been doing? Hmm? Listening to music and reading books? I'm listening to music, music. on this game. Okay. So we're driving, we're about an hour and a half outside of Austin. We're an hour from where we turn in the middle of Austin. We're called the... What? We, we go into Austin and then turn right. Austin? No. Oh, sorry. I think Houston. Yeah, oh, I meant like, from home. We're, we're like, like an hour and a half two from hours Austin. from Austin. Okay. Well, a little bit less than two hours. So we have to go through Houston and then on into Galveston. I'm hoping to find some historical, I don't know, marker, billboard, museum, some information about Juneteenth. And then we want to go to the beach. The acoustic tile on the ceiling, do that good where there should have been beautiful um, I want plaster work. There. Yeah. Um, that's really unfortunate. I wonder if the skylight was always here. We are in the, the, fans, the ceiling fans. <laughs> we're in the Gal Galveston Visitor Center, and this. Um, I bet those ceiling fans were worth their weight in gold when there was no well, air conditioning probably, in here. Probably, but they look hideous. This is the ballroom the, on a house in a house lighting, that is now the visitor the center. All yeah, that's yeah, that's tacky. But what well, was this building before? I, don't know, I didn't catch that. I'll show you all this. It's a beautiful building. It's the visitor center now, but it was this really gorgeous building with this great garden. Look at how, look how lovely the garden is, guys. Thanks, hon. It's beautiful, and there's another there's an extension of the building. It's beautiful. the Heritage Center here, um, the Visitor Center rather, and she was telling us that, so history says that the Emancipation Proclamation was actually read on the um, balcony of this house that I'm standing next to by the general, 
but we were told that that's not actually true. It's read by somebody else and not here, but that the crowd came up to this location. But let me show you the house. And there's the patio that they say it was read from. But the person who read it was actually a black soldier. And there's a statue commemorating him right here. So this is the statue right here. It says on 19th, on June 19th, 1865, at the close of the Civil War, U.S. General Army Gordon Granger issued an order in Galveston stating that the 1863 Emancipation Proclamation was in effect. That event, later known as Juneteenth, marked the end of slavery in Texas. Celebrated as a day of freedom since then, Juneteenth grew into an international commemoration and in 1979 became an official Texas holiday through the efforts of State Representative Albert L. Edwards of Houston. And this is the person who did the reading, who read the Emancipation Proclamation, June 19, 1865. The Emancipation Proclamation was signed January 1st, 1863. That gives you an idea of how much time passed before it was actually read officially in Texas. We got out to take a picture of this house and look at this, look at this guys. I've never seen a cloud do that in my life. I can't tell if that's blue sky behind it or shadow. Wow. Isn't that crazy? Is it sky? Yeah. It's like a shadow behind us. Look at that house, guys. We got out. We Look parked because we were like, what on earth? Look at it. It's like all of your best, like, haunted dreams. <laughs> <laughs> that is so amazing. Look at the entire block. Oh the, it's got the dome, the, the onion it's skin beautiful. dome. It's got the, the flying buttresses. Hey, with the flying That's buttresses. Something. It's like, it looks, I'm assuming it's a Catholic it looks, church. Look, it it's, even, it's even got a rose Eastern. window. Josh needs to get a picture. It it's even got a rose Eastern. window. I'm saying it's Catholic. I'm turn the dome right. looks east. I could be wrong, but the flying Josh buttresses and the rose window are absolutely Romanesque, not Romanesque, um, Gothic features. But the dome is definitely not. The dome is like Russian. The dome yeah. is Russian, but. Or actually, actually, it's Easter but the it is but I'm it's telling y'all that the rose window like and the flying buttresses like, and the um and the, the windows the it's everything everything except for the dome, the dome is, is gothic. totally gothic yep uh, well pseudo gothic so Norman beautiful. actually there's pillars it's a little late for Norman Gosh, it's gonna be out your window. the That's flying so buttresses cool. and the this dude just sitting on his porch like watching us they get this all the time yeah <laughs> they're tourists all the time I'm sure salivating and gawking like now this was the Get building. ready on the right. Is this the bishop's oh, house? I believe that's yeah. the bishop's house. So then oh, that's a Catholic church. Because the bishop wouldn't have been across from no Orthodox church. Oh this is oh. beautiful. Wow. There's a cross on top. Yeah, it's definitely a church. Sacred heart. Look at these. Mm-hmm. Catholic. Catholic church, yeah. I had teached their uh, architectures and stuff. <laughs> yeah, I teached it. The bishop's palace. Ooh! Oh Did anybody else see that lightning? Gotta go. Ooh. That was somebody's house. Yeah. A priest. A man of the cloth. Gulf of Mexico. Dear God. That's of the Mexico. My camera screen is upside down. That's the Gulf of Mexico. That's the Gulf of Mexico. So do you see how we just came up a hill? The hill that's the this is the wall, right, that we're on. Right, but I mean, we just came up it because if you look behind us, everything was down. Right. So if that water this breaches it, up. then that's how the flooding happens. This was all built up to keep the flooding from happening. Yeah. Yay, the beach, guys! It's the beach.
Like the deer, it's, it's actually cooler back there than it is here. Cooler than it is out there. Y'all, <laughs> this water is warm. I don't want to hate on Texas or anything, but everybody it's, who said the beach in Galveston was pretty wretched. It's not wretched. Okay. This water is like the temperature of pee running down your leg. That's and it's almost that color too. Okay, now in its defense, and I think we're gonna, the wind is probably gonna cause us a problem here. So in its defense, I grew up in New York, and the beaches, hold on, let me try to zoom y'all back out. Nope, you're out. The beaches in New York look just like this. Um, I don't know which way the current is going, but they're very much this color, this kind of brownish gray, not blue and gorgeous. And I feel like the water feels great. Y'all, it's so it's warm. warm and tepid and I think nasty. it's tepid. Huh? I said I think the current's going that way. It comes, it yeah, it comes be. like this. I mean, the general current in the Gulf, yeah. Gulf of Mexico comes, goes it counterclockwise. Alani got her goggles on and she right. is ready to do her thing. She got this. She don't care. It's water. Mm -mm. She good. Yeah. I'm like... Sea and dirty. It's like the color of lake water. <laughs> it is. Brown. <laughs> Brownish yellow. But you know why it's built from the Gulf of, from um, the Mississippi River. Honey, enjoy being at the beach. It's nice to be at the beach. And that cloud just like dissipated. Yeah. It was waiting for it to come to the beach. Yeah, well, I was afraid. That cloud I showed y'all earlier, we waited to come to get to the water because we weren't sure what was going to happen. But nothing happened, so people got back in the water. It was thunder and lightning earlier. I just, I feel like we need to go to a beach. We went to the beach. Somewhere else in the country. This was this. probably going to be our one beach trip for the summer, y'all. We can take a day trip to Savannah when we go to Atlanta. No, we can't. No, we don't have time. No, we don't have any time for that. We barely have time to see all our people we need to see when we get there. <laughs> This kid is throwing Cheetos at these seagulls and they are literally hovering in the air to catch them. First of all, yes, they are pests and it's disgusting and I'm hoping they don't come over here by us and poop. But I've never seen birds just hover like that. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Oh, get away! No. Uh, I have friends who would be peeing themselves right now with these birds flapping right around them like this. Man, so these seagulls are obnoxious. Look at this one flying a kite, y'all. Where is it? 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 Ah, there's her stealth bomber kite. <laughs> I know she's super excited about that. It is now dinner time. Wow, you are super red. We're underneath a red umbrella. So Eric is red. We're all kind of red right now. <laughs> huh? And the table's red. And I am red-ish. So I just wanted to show y'all that I got um, lobster um, ravioli. Lobster ravioli with Alfredo sauce. That's what Eric got. Can I eat this one? Yes. Josh got the same thing. Kalani got... Wait, what is that? Is it the lobster ravioli? Yeah, we got lobster ravioli. Kalani, what'd you get? Mm. Lobster, lobster mac, mac and cheese. cheese. That's right. It has bacon in it. And lobster Jessica, you got go. fettuccine alfredo? Yes. Shrimp fettuccine alfredo. Lobster taste. And then the we got calamari. Like and yeah, so we're gonna dig in. The lobster tastes kind of like grits. How does that At happen? First, and then it gets seasoned with Okay. Oh, yeah. It is seafood. Oh, yeah. You mean the rat mac and cheese it tastes like grits? No, because the lobster is grits. I mean, what is seafood? <laughs>